hot now, love. Bye bye. Bye. Excuse me for stopping you, sir, but you are Mr. Craven, aren't you? I am. May I have a word with you, sir? It may seem a bit bold of me, sir, but your good lady came round many a time to our cottage. My wife did? She did, sir, bless her heart. Well, Mrs... Sowerby, sir, Susan Sowerby. Won't you step inside a minute, sir? The wind's in the east and there's a warm fire, if you don't mind kitchen. Outside. You too, Susan. I'm gonna sit you down, sir. Will I get you a warm drink? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no, thank you. What exactly do you want to talk to me about? Well, sir. My daughter Martha. She works up at Manor. Indeed. Mrs. Medlock, my housekeeper, attends to all that side of things. Oh, no, 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 sir. It's not to do with her. It's the young lady she's looking after. My niece, you mean? Mary Lennox. I'd almost forgotten about her. Well, sir, I do hope I'm not presuming too much, but I think Miss Mary is very lonely. Lonely? Mrs. Medlock had orders to look after her and see that she had everything she wanted. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure Agnes Medlock does everything she can. But she has house and stuff to attend to. I suppose I'd better find the child a governess. Well, sir, she should be learning. What is it, love? Oh, well, tell Elizabeth Ellen to give you a drink of milk, then. Come on, then. Eh? Excuse me, sir. But from what our Martha tells me, I think Miss Mary should be getting a bit stronger before she starts lessons. And she needs companionship. Children of her own age. That is impossible at Misselford. Oh, yes, sir, I understood that. But would you have any objection to her coming here with our Martha? I did mention it to Mrs. Medlock, but she felt she couldn't take responsibility. I see no real reason why my niece shouldn't visit her. Our Martha's been brought up to hold her tongue about matters that don't concern her. And t'others are only children. I leave it to you, Mrs. Sarby. Do you think you could see Miss Mary yourself, sir? I know nothing about children, but if you think... I think she could do with a little interest taken in her, sir. From all I hear, she's had little enough of that in her young life. Here's Peddler's cart. I'm on my way to Thwait. Good day, sir. Good day, Mrs. Arthur. Oh, thank you. I'm sure I've done my best, sir. Yes, Mrs. Medlock, I have no doubt of that. All I'm saying is that perhaps you haven't realised that a child of my niece's age could be lonely. Well, sir, I can only tell you that Miss Mary is, and has been ever since she set foot in this house, one of the most disagreeable and disobedient children it's ever been my misfortune to come across. If you only knew, Don't sir... Don't trouble to tell me, Mrs Medlock. I'm sure you've had more work and more anxiety since her arrival, and I know only too well the burden you and all the staff at Misselthwaite have had to bear for these past ten years. Uh, and still bear. I have accepted the responsibility of adding to that burden. Perhaps I should have consulted you before deciding to offer a home to my niece. Oh, I didn't expect that, sir, naturally. What I'm trying to say is that to keep certain things hidden from a child who's had her own way ever since she drew breath is not easy and... Very well, Mrs. Madlock, you don't have to go into explanations. Bring my niece down to me this evening and let me judge for myself. Oh, been well then while I've been off at Thwaite. I am, Mother. Where's our Dickon? Don't know. Still up at Manor, I suppose. He said he'd give me a ride on a pony. Well, if he said he will, then he will. You just have to wait till he comes home, that's all. But he's never at home now. Well, Miss Mary needs company more than you do. You've got each other. Anyway, let's hope things will be getting better for her. Johnny, take your fingers out of that. Haven't you finished?
finished your tea yet, Miss Mary? That was your third piece of cake. I've nearly finished. <laughs> There's a difference in your appetite. The difference is I'm getting fatter. See you like our Dickin. I think he's beautiful. <laughs> well, he's the best lad as ever was born. But uh, us never thought he were beautiful. His nose turns up too much and he's got too many freckles. Have you finished planting all them seeds yet? Not quite all. Dickon says some have to go in later. But the earth's already. Who gave the leave? I mean, who did they ask about it? I haven't asked anybody yet. Well, I wouldn't ask Mr Roach. He's Ed Gardner. He's too grand. I've only seen him once and I didn't like him. <laughs> well, if I was you, I'd ask Ben Weatherstaff. He's not half as bad as he looks, for all he's so crabbed. Mr Craven lets him do what he likes because Mrs Craven was fond of him and he used to make her laugh. If I found a bit of garden right out of the way, a bit no one wanted, no one could mind if I had it, could they? Well, I can't see no reason. Mind you, it's not for me to say. Can I go out again, Martha? It's still quite light. Um, no, not now. I've got something to tell you. I thought I'd let you eat your tea in peace. Mr Craven came back late last night, and he wants to see you. Oh, why? He didn't want to see me when I first arrived. I heard Pitcher say he didn't. Well, I think it's all on account of something Mother said to him this morning. I don't know what it were, but it's put him in mind to see you before he goes away again. Why doesn't he stay here, Martha? Oh, I don't rightly know, I'm sure, Miss. I mean, part of his work's in London, and he's always travelling abroad, and... Have you washed your hands and face, child? No. Well, go along. Be quick about it. Oh, I haven't seen that look on her face for weeks. I have. Every time I speak to the girl. Oh, I only hope she'll be civil to her uncle, though I doubt it. Go and help her, Martha. Miss, you don't want to keep your uncle waiting. I don't want to see him. He won't like me. No one does. How does the light descend? Not at all, really. But I never thought of that before. <laughs> Mother says that to me once. Hold your head up, Miss. She were at her wash tub now, we're in a terrible temper. And she turns round to me and she says, Thy young vixen, thou. There, that stand saying I don't like that and then I don't like this and... How does that like this then? <laughs> it made me laugh and it brought me to my senses in a minute. I like your mother. I should think they did. I've never seen her. No, there aren't. Well, she's the kindest, most sensiblest woman. Hurry up, child. We're nearly ready, Mrs Medlock. Come on, then. Here, put on your frock. Well, come on, then. Lift your arms up. Ow, you've caught my hair. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. You're not exactly making it very easy for me, though, are you? Right. I'll just brush your hair. Then you can go. smile be quite pretty <laughs> come along love it won't eat you Come in. This is Miss Mary, sir. You can go, Mrs. Medlock. I will ring when I want you to take her away. Very good, sir. Come here.
Are you well? Yes. Do they take good care of you? Yes. You are very thin. I'm getting fatter. I'm sorry we've not met before. I've been away a great deal. It doesn't matter. I intended to send you a governess or nurse or someone of that sort, but I forgot. Please. Please. What do you want to say? I'm too old for a nurse. And please don't let me have a governess yet. That's what the Sarvi woman said. Martha's mother. She knows about children. She has eight. She knows. What do you want to do? I want to stay out of doors. I never liked it in India. It was too hot and I was always ill. But here I feel hungry. Yes. Mrs. Sarvi said it would be better to let you get stronger before we think about a governess. I feel stronger when I'm in the garden and the wind comes over the moor. Where do you play? Everywhere. Martha's mother sent me a skipping rope. I skip and run. And I look about to see if things are beginning to stick out of the earth. I don't do any harm. Don't look so frightened. How could you do any harm? You may do what you like. May I? Please stop looking so frightened. Of course you may. I'm your guardian. Though I'm a poor one for any child. But I want you to be happy and comfortable. I am quite happy. Play out of doors as much as you like. Is there anything you want? Toys, books, dolls? Uh, well, anything. Might I... Might I have a bit of earth? Earth? What do you mean? To plant seeds in. To make things grow. To see them come alive. Do you care about gardens so much? I didn't know about them in India. I did sometimes lay little beds and stick flowers in them, but they always died. Here it's quite different. A bit of earth. You can have as much earth as you like. You remind me of someone else who loved gardens and things that grow. When you see a bit of earth you want, take it and make it come alive. May I take it from anywhere, if it's not wanted? Anywhere. Goodbye, Mary. I'm glad we've met. I shall be abroad all the summer. Goodbye. Some young women of your age would be glad of the money. Mrs. Medlock, I ask you, what's the good of having money? when there's nowhere to spend it and no-one to spend it with. Well, there's Mr. Craven's bell now. I'm surprised he's kept Miss Mary so long. What are you going to do, speak to him again? What's the use? The last time I saw him, he said he'd think it over. Now another month's gone by and I'm still here. And likely to be till I'm old and grey. Oh, stop feeling so sorry for yourself, girl. Many in this house worse off than you are. Is there? Beastly, hateful rain! It sounds just like a person lost on the moor, wandering on and on, crying. It isn't the wind now, it's different. It's that crying again. I've never heard it for so long before.
Are you a ghost? No, I'm not. Are you one? No. I'm Colin. Colin? Colin Craven. Who are you? I am Mary Lennox. Mr. Craven is my uncle. He is my father. Your father? No one ever told me he had a boy. Come nearer. You are real, aren't you? I have such real dreams. Feel my hand. Take hold of this shawl. Feel how thick and warm it is. Where did you come from? From my own room. The wind wuthered and it woke me up. And then I heard crying. And I wanted to find out where it came from. Why were you crying? Because I couldn't go to sleep and my head ached. Tell me your name again. Mary Lennox. Didn't anyone tell you I'd come to live here? No, they daren't. Daren't? What do you mean? Because I should have been afraid you might see me. I won't ever let people see me or talk about me. Why? Because I'm always ill and I can't walk. My father won't let anyone talk about me. You see, if I live, I may be a hunchback. Oh. But I shan't live. I shall never grow up. My father hates to think I might have a crooked back like his. It's all so strange. Everything here is a secret. Rooms locked up. And you? Have you been locked up too? No, I stay in this room because I don't want to be moved out of it. It's a wonderful room. Does your father come to see you? Sometimes. Usually when I'm asleep. He doesn't want to see me. Why not? Because my mother died when I was born. He thinks I don't know, but I've heard people talking. I think he hates me. He hates the garden too because she died. That's why he looked at her. What garden? Oh, just a garden she used to like. Don't you ever go out? I've been taken to the seaside, but people stayed so I wouldn't stay. I used to wear an iron thing to keep my back straight, but a grand doctor came from London and said it was stupid. Did he? Yes. He told me to take it off and make me go out in the fresh air. I hate fresh air and I don't want to go out. I didn't want to go out when I first came here. If you don't like people to see you, do you want me to go away? No, stay here. That's my nurse. Do you know her? I've seen her. She'll send me back to my room if she finds me. You're not to go. Where shall I hide then? Don't be a moment, Master Colin. I'll go behind the curtains. Or my candle. She'll see it. Can't you sleep, Master Colin? Have you been calling long? No, I want some more light in here. Bring in the lamp. The lamp? Yes, go and fetch it. Oh, very well, Master Colin. She's coming back. Yes, I know. I don't believe you are a dream after all. No, I'm not. Dreams just end. They don't have to hide. You needn't hide. I could make her let you stay. It'll be much easier if she doesn't mind here. Oh, all right. Did it keep you awake, Master Colin? No, I can't sleep. My back's too bad. At least it was. This room's very warm, sir. Quite sort of heavy. Shall I open the window a little way? No, stop, stop. You know fresh air makes me worse. Oh, very well. Now go back to bed and shut the door. I don't think I should leave you with the lamp. It might flare up or something. Don't be silly. Do as I tell you. Very well, then. But you've never had the lamp at night before. Go away. Poor nurse. You were cross with her. She's a stupid woman. Come here and sit down. All right. But I'll light my candle again first. The nurse might come back again. And if she does, I think I'll go this time. It would be safer. How long have you been at Misselthwaite? About two months. I came in a big ship from India. 
When I first came here, I hated it, and I had nothing to do. Haven't you got plenty of toys and games? No, I don't like toys. I like books. Well, you can read mine. I'm tired of them all. Can you really have anything you ask for? Yes. Everyone has to do as I tell them. No one dares make me angry, because if I'm angry, I feel ill. And they all know I shan't live to grow up. Do you think you won't live? I don't suppose I shall. My doctor is my father's cousin. If I die, he will have this house after my father. I shouldn't think he wants me to live. Do you want to live? No, I don't want to die. When I think about it, I lie here and cry and cry. I've heard you crying. Was it about that? I expect so. Let's talk about something else. Tell me about that garden. Why was it locked up? Your father did it. He locked the door and buried the key. No one's been allowed in it for ten years. I want to see it. I wouldn't mind for a share in a secret garden. I want the key dug up. I'm going to make them open that door. Oh, don't. Don't do that. Why? Don't you want to see it? Yes. Yes, I do. But if you make them open the door, it'll never be a secret again. A secret? What do you mean? Well, you see... If no one knew about it but us, and if there was a hidden door, and we could find the key and open it, we could go there and shut ourselves in, and no one would know about it. Go on. If the garden was a secret, we could watch things growing and see how many rose trees are alive. And we could plant things. Don't you see? Oh, you must see how much nicer it would be if it was a secret. I've never had a secret before. Except that one about not living to grow up. They don't think I know about it, so it is a sort of secret. But I like this one better. I feel almost sure I can find out how to get in. And if you can make people do what you want, we could go alone, and it would always be a secret. Yes, I should like that. What would Mrs. Medlock do if she found out I'd been here? She'd do as I'd tell her. I'm glad you came. I'll tell her I want you to come every day. I'll come as often as I can, but I must look for the key of the garden door. Yes, and then you can come and tell me all about it. I think you shall be a secret too. I can always send Nurse out of the room. Do you know Martha? Yes, she waits on me. Yes, she looks after me when the nurse goes out. Martha shall tell you when to come and see me. Martha knew about you all the time. Yes, she often looks after me. I think the nurse likes to get away from me as often as she can. I've been here a long time. You look rather sleepy. I wish I could go to sleep while you were still here. Do you? Well, I'll sing to you like my eye used to in India when I couldn't go to sleep. It always worked. Put your head on your pillow so that it's comfortable. Now shut your eyes. Chanda mama do the kay, poi bakai do 